Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks show, your go-to place to learn about technology trends and innovations directly from the leaders. This is your host, Faisal Batu from San Jose, California. Networking is the backbone of internet. Thanks to all the groundbreaking innovations in networking that we are reaping the benefits of internet we see today. In today's show, we will learn about latest innovation trends in networking and especially how it overlaps with AI. We are fortunate to have Shaker Iyer as our guest today. Shaker is CEO of Arcus. Arcus is a software company based in Silicon Valley that provides scalable high-performance network solutions for data centers, service providers, and edge cloud networks. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Shaker and learn from his insights. Hello, Shaker. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, Faisal. Great. So, Shaker, tell us about the core problem Arcus is solving and how is it differentiated from traditional networking players like Cisco, Juniper, and players like DriveNets? Sure. The core problem really is one where if you think about what's happening in the landscape around us, there are so many different applications that are coming to the forefront driven by things like cloud computing, and now AI, and all of these things are geographically distributed across the globe. And uh, for about two decades or now, we have been really well served by this concept called the web or the internet that has provided good point-to-point connectivity. However, the requirements of the new applications that are driven by massive large-scale AI and cloud computing require a completely different form of network architecture and infrastructure. So that's the problem that we address at Arcus, where we said we're going to kind of invent ground up a networking fabric and a layer that's super efficient and then bring that to our customers. And our customers could be cloud providers, colo providers, hyperscalers, telecom carriers and enterprises in the form of next generation routing and switching. Now, how this is different from the incumbent vendors like Cisco and Juniper and Arista, uh, uh, Huawei, et cetera, are those companies are really built on creating purpose-built routing switching solutions for customers for different points in their network. They're actually not motivated or focused to providing a single software layer architecture that can be one common platform across multiple different underlying hardware form factors or even uh, vendors. On the flip side, we've got players like DriveNets, IP Infusion, et cetera, who are also like us working on a disaggregated architecture where they're working on the software with the multiple hardware providers. The difference there is They're focused on one application or one use case or a business model that is much more targeted at just kind of OEMing their technology. Whereas we are focused on multiple use cases, multiple uh, customer segments in a way in which we can have a very simple abstraction that allows our entire customer base to use Arcus as this common networking platform that gives them tremendous benefit in terms of uh, both performance as well as cost. She could tell us about the distributed AI. What use cases are enabled by distributed AI and what sort of challenges enterprises face when they try to enable scenarios with distributed AI? What is turning out to be a, a shift in AI is that the um, the focus is moving from training to inferencing. And simply speaking, inferencing is the ability to take the trained model and actually use it for something useful. So whether it's an autonomous driving car that is making a decision on whether or not to uh, pass an intersection, or if it is a a financial trading application that is actually making a decision on whether to place a trade or not. These are all inferences that are drawn at the endpoints, at the edges, at the points of these decisions. And those decision points are actually distributed in the network architecture or globally. 
So training can be done taking one giant rack or data center, putting a lot of GPUs in it, and just kind of doing a lot of compute over a period of time to train uh, the model. But inferencing requires that you take the results of that training, send it out to the points where you're making a decision, and actually make those smart decisions. Now, this puts into focus why distributed architecture and distributed networking is important because A, you have to take that train model and pull that result out to the endpoints. Second, at the endpoint, you have to decide how much of training you want to do right there versus go back to the mothership and refer to that and come back. Third, every time you are actually inferencing, you may have done something right or wrong and you need to take that information and then use that back to train the model. Now, all this can be done only if you have an efficient fabric that is really linking all these points together in a way in which everything can be done and it needs to be done with great accuracy and with like whatever split microsecond latency. So this is why the infrastructure now needs to be distributed. And without that, you really don't have a successful model inferencing algorithm that you can actually execute uh, for useful purposes for enterprises as well as consumers. Speaking of networking and AI, you know, if you see networking, it's mission critical service because anything breaks in networking, the whole yeah. network goes down. On the other right. hand, AI is about prediction and we all know that AI models can hallucinate. So from yeah. that perspective, networking and AI seems to be contradictory to each other. So in your view, how can AI play a role in networking, especially agentic AI? Sure, I mean, uh, at the outset, I'd like to explain that there are two sort of interconnections between AI and networking. One is the use of networking in order to create and deploy better AI. Now, this question that you're asking me now is the reverse. It's how do you actually use AI to benefit networking in a way in which the uh, ills of AI, if you will, are not actually coming back to bite us uh, when we start using them for networking. So here I would say, first of all, as with any new technology, it will improve. So of course there are problems with AI, there are the occasional things uh, around how results are not exactly what people want or hallucinations and so on. But as the adoption continues and as people use this more and more, these problems are going to get solved. Now, when you start using that AI for networking, you can start doing things like more intelligent inferencing, better predictive algorithms for understanding how networks are going to perform, when are faults going to happen and proactively start correcting them. Or for that matter, even just simply uh, enabling a router to go and change its path based on some of the learning algorithms that it has access to there is going to be a tremendous amount of benefit of using AI for better networking. And we're going to start seeing how agents and the use of agents and agentic AI can actually be helpful for network creation, network management, network monitoring, and as well as network fault detection and correction. Shikhar, I know that uh, Arcus also engages in providing uh, solutions for 5G. So normally people know 5G as a wireless service that provides higher data speeds on cellular for mobile devices. So right. what role networking plays in 5G and edge computing? Sure, of course. 5G as a technology is really the fifth generation of mobile um, infrastructure protocols, etc. And now people are talking about 6G and there's a transition in terms of each of these waves of mobile technology going to the next one. I think why we are at a, uh, once again, at a bit of an inflection point and crossroads with 5G is we as consumers are not just going to pay more for our cell phone service from our providers like uh, Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile uh, just because they're going to go from 5G to 6G. We're expecting some magic to happen. Now that magic that happens in these uh, network infrastructure technologies is because of the kind of work that we at Arcus are doing. So for example, we're working on a technology called uh, SRV6 uh, and uh, segment routing V6 is now being coupled with the 
mobile infrastructure as well as the fixed wireless infrastructure in order to enable that infrastructure to deliver more services uh, with greater uh, granularity, quality of service, and uh, ability to tune, for example, the bandwidth allocated to different services. So this is how we take concepts like network slicing and deliver that on top of the 5G network now, as you look at that transition going from 5G onwards to 6G, this is going to become even more interesting because we're going to be able to combine the mobile infrastructure, the fixed wireless infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure, as well as the enterprise on-premise infrastructure, bring all that together, and then layer on top of it a common networking abstraction so that if you are, for example, trying to do something in the form of smart AI inferencing at the edges, then that can benefit from best-in-class routing and switching that happens over your cellular um, infrastructure that happens over your fixed wireless connection points, uh, the cloud, as well as your own data sectors. And that is in turn is then going to give the carriers and service providers more ability to go in and command a premium for their networks uh, compared to what they are trying to do today. Shekhar, we uh, saw an announcement recently with NVIDIA. So can you tell us more about, uh, you know, what are you working on with NVIDIA and how will that benefit your customers? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for most uh, of the viewers here, you would have heard of NVIDIA as a company that's obviously a pioneer in AI and pioneer in uh, GPUs for AI. Uh, what is probably a lesser known um, component of NVIDIA is how they are also influencing the networking landscape. And that is where we are working in close partnership with NVIDIA. Uh, in order to enable that to happen in a faster, better way. So as an example, uh, we announced a switch called the TGAX, uh, a telco grade AI switch. And the idea there is for operators who are looking at putting the right kind of switches into their edges so that those switches can help the operators deliver network services monetize them, and then also pull in AI infrastructure and then offer AI as a service from their edges. That is enabled by this form of a switch that we released in partnership with NVIDIA. We have also talked about and announced how Arc OS, our operating system, works on top of both the Spectrum Silicon from uh, NVIDIA as well as the Bluefield uh, DPUs from NVIDIA. Then when you think about efficiency of your AI infrastructure, you want to limit the use of your NVIDIA GPU compute to only the maximum uh, requirements or uh, LLMs and algorithms that require that kind of high performance and high cost computing. And we can help there because what we can do is using Arc OS, we can run that on an NVIDIA Bluefield DPU, take away some of the network functions like IPsec uh, from burdening the GPU, and then run that on top of the DPU. And that then frees up costly GPU cycles for you to actually put that to use with more efficient LLM computing. So this is the kind of architecture where you can get 30 to 40% improvement in things like efficiency, performance, cost reduction, uh, power consumption, all of which are actually going to become very, very important and critical problems as people are deploying more and more AI. Cool. Thank you so much, Shaker, for joining our show. I'm sure audience learned a lot from your insights. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you for having me and uh, wonderful to share some thoughts on this uh, podcast. Mm -hmm.